So tonight, um, I'll offer a little bit about um, a word from Pali called Sadha. Sadha and um, It um, often gets translated as faith. But it has uh, a few, few meanings to it in a way. But sad is anyone who's in the yoga world might know the word sat, truth, truthfulness, sad. It's also, you can think of it like heart, heart, sad, heart or truth being life as it is. And the da is to put something or place something in this particular translation I have. And so it's like the way we place the heart on something. You think of the way we place awareness with heartfulness. You can see how it's a very beautiful meaning, sadha. So it's very relevant to how we come to meet ourselves in meditation or how we come to meet life. So it's our felt connection with life. So in that meditation, we're going through the sense of compassion, allowing in a memory of something that had touched us. It's that felt connection then with life, because we can sort of very much meet things from up here somewhere is not the same as then sensing that connection, feeling that connection. If you're in a relationship, your partner will know when you're up here, right? It's not the same unless you're both doing it, of course. <laughs> Smiling at Kate. <laughs> So the, the faith component is, is really important as well, though, because it also has this quality of um, it's inviting us to, to know that we can do something, that it's not beyond us, in faith in something. So the important thing of this, depending on where you are in life, is moving out of the sense of it being an unconscious victim to what's happening inside, for instance, and outside of us. So faith then is this uh, sense of moving out of helplessness, hopelessness into agency, into can do perhaps, but with, but with this quality of heartfulness at its center. It's a quality of heart. So persistence is also, in a way, related to this in a strange way. So when we think of it in terms then of like a um, persistence or a quality of will, or determination in particular. It's, um, it's a determination or a persistence that's aligned with the heart, with continuity of awareness. So we're aligning ourselves with something that's already there inside. Awareness is already continuous, it just gets covered by parts of the mind. So as we then align ourselves with heartfulness, because the just having mindfulness, in a way, doesn't change a lot. We can have presence and awareness of things, but it doesn't actually change things. But it's by bringing in the heart then that this is like the the lubricant to allow things to open up inside, to soften, to expand, to open. 
We can be present, but rigid. Present or tight. Okay. We can be mindful and be very hurtful in how we relate. We can be aware and not have many ethics about what we're doing. That's why the, the quality of heartfulness then is something then that um, builds relationships. It supports relationships. It's encouraging. It's uplifting. It brings buoyancy to the heart. So when, when it's there, well, the last point on that side of things is that when this quality of sadha is there, doubt falls away. When that heartfulness is there, doubt just softens. It kind of disappears. So one thing um, that I want to relate it with is there's the, it's the teaching on the four factors of stream entry, which is the, you might say the first stage of awakening. Some of you have probably never heard of that in Buddhism, but they talk about these four stages of awakening. And the first one is stream entry, but most of us don't need to worry about anything other than that. So I think it's pretty lofty and unattainable sometimes. But these, these four factors are really important because they really give a, a deep, simple framework, not just about meditation, but about all aspects of our life. The first one is this one about associating with good people, associating with people who, who, um, who care for you, who look out for you, who place goodness right there in the central post of their life. You know? this, is, this is what's important to us. And that's why the community is so important in whatever you're doing. Because if you're just doing it by yourself, uh, it's a lot slower. It's a lot harder. Here, we have a term some of you will know quite well called Kalyanamitta. It means good, good spiritual friend. The friend that's there to, to encourage you, to bring out the best in you. When you're going off track and saying, hey, what are you doing there? Let's come back over here. This is the first step. And the next one is listening to true Dharma, the teachings of, of truth. And this is really about how we nourish ourselves. All these are about how, how we nourish ourselves. This is how we nourish through um, listening, but also reading as well. Uh, it's very easy to get caught into a 24 hour news cycle that is hardly nourishing at the moment and um, kind of can feel like we're missing out on something right if we don't do that got to keep up with the news but if we think of it as nourishment like we can see how does this affect us so if you're really paying attention I think certainly I noticed for myself after about half an hour, I'm starting to feel a bit flatter and flatter and flatter, getting a little bit deflated after reading the ABC or other ones. But if we're listening to um, uplifting stories, it has a very different effect. It's like we're feeling, we're, we're actually feeling more buoyant, lighter. 
in a way of like more energized. It's a refining of, of presence there. And the third, third one, the third factor is called uh, having right awareness. And they, in particular, they talk about this quality of yoni so minisakara. Yoni so. Yoni, some of you will be quite familiar with. Yoni yoga. The womb. Mm -hmm. And so yoni so means looking into the womb of things. Looking clearly into the womb of things appropriate attention the attention then that's sort of looking not just at the surface level but what's happening underneath not just at the, the symptoms but what's the cause so where there's suffering there what's the cause of that suffering what's what, what is it that keeps it locked in what keeps us in this this pattern of you know again and again going through the same turmoil the same um, painful thought patterns, the painful relationship patterns. So, so this attention is one that goes right into the heart of it. And create means having a lot of humility, a lot. Because a lot of the time it's bad news for yourself when you start looking closer. It's not so... Um, some good things, but there's sometimes that's not so pretty. And the fourth one is then taking action in accordance with truth, in accordance with nature, with life. Acting in accordance with nature. And we sort of then we sort of just go back and everything links in together. They just sort of feed each other. There's a teacher in India last century called Meha Baba. He spoke about this, this, this we'll just say this uh, way of connection, sadda, this way of connection, this way of uh, relating. And this thing about having good friends. He said, love is essentially self-communicative. Those who don't have it, get it from those who do. So if you're not feeling it, you can seek out those who do. Take the risk to do that. And that can be like, you're going to just hop on YouTube and listen to the Dalai Lama, right? That usually brings some joy. Some laughter, some buoyancy for the heart. We'll just do a little exercise inside just to get give you a sense of this. Let's make it easy. If you want to just close your eyes. And just think of someone you like. You don't have to get into any fancy posture, but just think of someone you like. And wish them well. Gently wish them well. May you be happy here. this generosity of spirit. Just notice how it feels for you to do that. How does it affect you in the body to do that? And as you're doing that, might just see if you can also just look for the goodness in this person. What's it like to do that?
And if you stay with that, just check out too that like the more you look for that, the more you see. You get good at looking for the good. As one of my teachers said, you can look, if you look really closely, you can see they're beautiful. They follow the Buddha. So this, this quality of sadha, it's resting, it's like the heart resting there, it can, can rest inside and can rest outside of us. And it's a simple way to bring lightness and joy to our, to our life. The joy of being with friends, going for a walk. It can be the joy of standing up for someone. It feels good to stand up for someone. The joy of supporting someone who's down on their luck. The joy of just resting. Resting the mind. I think we actually finish up there. I'm gonna get a short one tonight. Just wondering if anyone's got any um, observations or questions or.